Aha, that's right, the mustache is no longer there. Hey guys, and welcome to episode 22 of how to be a 3D animator. In this video, we're gonna talk about how to light the turntable we made, the, turn the turntable we made in the previous video. This is gonna be my way of lighting. We're gonna be uh, integrating the three point lighting system. I don't know if that's an actual thing, but it's a term I've been using to describe it. So after learning how to light our turntable, we're gonna learn how to render it using Arnold. This will be great for your reel. If your reel is about animation, the recruiters don't really care, but it, it is always nicer to have your reel rendered rather than play black. So after rendering we're gonna go ahead and learn how to render in wireframe and Afterward and this will be great for 3d artists now I know this is an animation channel, but I'm sure there's some 3d artists that do follow the channel uh, If that's the case you can transition into wireframe Which again, I will show you guys how to do and that that about covers it So I think we're just gonna light render wireframe then combine it all in post processing in premiere so if that sounds like something you'd like to watch, then make sure to smash that like button, stay till the end, leave a comment, and I don't know, what else do YouTubers say? Um, nope. Yeah, I don't know, let's just jump into this video. Okay, so first things first, we want to create a project folder for our project. This will tell Maya where to render out the images to. So we're going to go to File, Project Window, press New, and just locate where you would like this project folder to be created. So I'm going to name this Video 22, press Accept. And now when we go to our render settings up here, on Path, it'll path the renders that we create into the folder, the project folder we just created. It'll all go into the images. So this is the folder we created. I'm going to open it up. And once we render things, the renders will end up going into images. So that's step one. Okay, so this next step will be lighting. And since we're going to be rendering this with Arnold, we're going to need Arnold lights. So we're going to go up here to Arnold, go all the way down to lights, grab ourselves an area light. I'm gonna press R to rescale it. And as you guys can see, um, our picture is still black. And so what we have to do is uncheck normalize on the light right over here. Uncheck. And now we can see the effects of our light. If you want to see your render real time, you can go to Arnold, make your way down to open Arnold render view. This window pops up. You can press this play button, which makes it real time. So now if I move my perspective around, you can see the real time render of your character. I'm just gonna put this over here on the side. And so there's a few things to keep in mind with the Arnold lights. One is the color. Um, I suggest if you guys are going for, for something realistic-ish, <laughs> I suggest using uh, use color temperature. So I'm gonna check that. And with color temperature, the higher the temperature goes, the colder it becomes, the lower, the more orange. I'll show you guys. So if we bring the temperature up to 10,000, you see our uh, render gets very blue. And if you bring it down to the 2000s, it gets very orange. So I'm going to go ahead and set up our fill light. And I'll, I'll explain the different lighting system we're going to use in a second. Okay, so I went ahead and scaled up this light. We're going to go ahead and rename this fill underscore light and so now we have one light in our scene and this is what our render looks like um, I went ahead and changed the temperature to 9500 and another thing I did was I changed sampling to 5 the higher your sampling the less noise you're gonna have noise is this thing right here those little distortions in the picture so when it looks grainy, you kind of need more light samples. And so you have to increase the sampling a bit. I think five should be good enough. We're going to do some other stuff as well to try and battle this. So that's essentially all I did. I just made it bigger. And the bigger your light is, the softer your shadows will be. And so the whole point of a fellow light is to fill up all the non-lit areas in a very, very soft way. So there's no harsh shadows. Next light we're going to need is going to be our backlight, commonly referred to as rim light. 
And so there we go. And all I did to create this rim light was to duplicate this big light by pressing Ctrl D, dragging it out, rotating the direction, and scaling it down. Because once you scale it down and increase the intensity, it will have a much harsher light. So, and that's what we want. We, we kind of want harsh outlines. Um, and so in this case, for the backlight, for the rim light, I changed the temperature to 3500, so it's a lot warmer. And making it smaller, I also increased its intensity by 70. So now our backlight has 70 intensity, and the temperature is 3500. This is pretty much the only changes I made to it. And of course we have it facing the back of the character. And what that does is it creates very nice backlit yellow backlit light around the edges and that's pretty much the only reason we're using this for just to separate the character a little bit give it a little bit of an outline and now for the third and final light we are creating our key light now again same process i went ahead and duplicated the backlight and changed the temperature to 7500 which is more of a cooler but more closer to white so a white color and this is our key light our main light we want it to be neutral because we, well, we have a cold fill light and we have a warm backlight and so we need our key light to be a little bit more of a neutral somewhere in the middle and it's not as big as a fill light but it's also bigger than the backlight and I set the intensity of the key light to 25 and again, temperature 7500. And this gives us something like this. Now you guys don't have to follow the exact numbers I used, but the main thing I want you guys to keep in mind is just the format of the lights. Just to sum things up a little bit, and I'll try and go through this really fast. The basic rule of thumb when it comes to lighting is the three point system. I don't actually know if that's what it's called, but uh, I, guess, I guess I'm coining the term now if it's not already a term. So there's three different points you want to place your lights, each at different temperatures and different intensity. So you have two lights in the front. One will be the key light, which is this guy right here. So this will be your main light source. The second light you need is the fill light. And as the name suggests, it fills the areas not lit by the key light. So there's no harsh shadows. And lastly, we have the backlight. And as the name suggests, it's in the back of the character and it's meant to create a nice outline around the edges of the character separating the character from the background okay now so let's say we have our light set up and we want to render the character how are we gonna go about that time to get into rendering so for this i'm gonna walk you guys through rendering with arnold now that we have our project set and we have our lighting we're gonna open the render settings right here we're gonna go to common and make sure the path is the same as the project we set. In my case it is, we're good. And for the naming, I'm just gonna change the name to Zelda Turntable. And I'm going to make the image format PNG. And lastly, I'm coming down to frame and animation, changing the name formatting to name underscore number Exd. And what this does is that it'll have each picture named Zelda turntable underscore the numbers. So the first picture will be named Zelda turntable underscore 0001. And the reason there's three zeros beforehand and it's four digits is because our frame padding is set to four. So first image will be called 0001 and the last image will be frame 159 so it'll be called Zelda turntable underscore 0159 hopefully that's not too confusing um, and actually we're gonna set that right now so we want the first frame the starting frame to be one we want the ending frame to be 159 there we go and we can scroll down a little bit farther to our render renderable cameras perspective and we have the turntable camera we want neither of these so I'm gonna delete one and then change perspective to camera one. And if we go up here, let's check what our camera one is. 
this one right here. So we're going to place this just right. This is where we want it. And we want to render this camera. So camera one. We're going to scroll a little bit farther down. We want it to be 1920 by 1080. And I'm setting the resolution to 300, which might be a little high. But, um, and you know what, for the sake of this video, I'll bring it down a little bit more. I'll bring it down to 150. So 150 resolution, 1920 by 1080. And lastly, we're going to go to our Arnold render tab. I'm going to change, I changed the fuse and specular to three. And I'm just increasing the sampling a little bit just so we get a little bit less noise on our render. Okay, now we're going to close our render settings. We're going to go to the top left, change this to rendering. Go to the render tab. Down to render sequence. Press the little box. And we want to change the camera to camera one. And I think every and I think everything else is okay. So I'm going to render sequence and close. All right, and now my animation is being rendered on the side. I'm gonna pause this and I'll join you guys back once we have our entire sequence rendered out. Okay, so we got our render and they're all in separate pictures and essentially created a sequence of pictures from frame one all the way down to frame 159. Now, time for step four, which is gonna be wireframe. So what you need to do here is select your character Go to your last tab here, which will be the textures. And I'm going to change Lambert to AI wireframe. And I think AI wireframe just comes with Arnold. And so I'm selecting AI wireframe. Now I'm going to do the same for the hair. For the eye. And lastly, for the bow. Now, if we press render, we'll get something like this, which is fine. It's okay. But what if you want the texture underneath the lines? So I'm going to show you guys how to do that exactly. So let's say we have the body selected. I'm going to go to the last layer again, the last tab. And on fill color, I'm going to press the little checkered box. And we're going to replace the fill color with a file. And the file is going to be our diffuse map. So that takes care of that. Now we have the hair left. We'll just do the same for the hair and everything else. Do the exact same thing for the eye. Eyes diffuse, and lastly, we're gonna do the exact same thing for the bow. There we go. And now we're gonna try this again. We're gonna go to Arnold, render, and now we have something a little more appealing. We have our, our wireframe over the diffuse. So, one thing you guys will notice is that the model is cut up into triangles. The wireframe is in triangles, and we need this to be in polygons. So we're going to go again one by one and changing these into polygons. Polygon. And we have the hair left polygon and then, and then the eye polygons. Now we try this again. Now we have a proper wireframe for our character on top of the diffuse. And then we can do the same thing and re-render this as well. All right, and I'll see you guys in the next step once I render this with the same exact method that we used in the previous step. Okay, so for the fifth and last step, we're going to bring these bad boys into Premiere and load them as a sequence. What you want to do is go to File, Import, go to our Project folder, Images, and here we have the wireframe. You essentially load these as you would any other file, except you want to click Image Sequence. And what this does, it, it automatically creates a video out of all of the sequenced images. So for example, it starts from 0001 and it makes its way to 0159. Let's press open. And now if you guys see here, it actually plays it by itself. It comes in as a video file. Drag this here, see what we have. Cool, there we go. So it automatically created the video for us. 
Now let's load in the other one. So again, file import. I'm gonna click the very first one. Make sure image sequence is checked on and open. And there we go. We have our render as well. Let's play this. Looks perfect. Okay. Now I'm just gonna make a duplicate of each one by clicking on it, holding alt and dragging away. That was the wireframe and now the regular turn table. Click on it, hold alt, drag to the side. Okay, now that we have both render and the wireframe, there's a couple things we can do. We can actually fade this, fade the render into the wireframe midway through the turntable. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. So we'll say, so we'll say at this point we want to fade into our wireframe version. So I'm gonna go ahead and press C and cut our rendered version. So it switches to wireframe. And I'm going to go to effects, type in transition. And I'm gonna grab film dissolve and grab this and put this on our second rendered layer. Now I'm gonna press play. And, and now we have it fading into wireframe. Okay, and I'm just going to show you guys how to exactly render this. We're going to go ahead and go to file. Make our way down to export. Media. We'll get this pop up and you want to make sure the format is on H264. Uh, make sure the use maximum render quality is checked. We're going to send this to Q. And now that it's up on media encoder, I'm going to click on output file. Make sure we're outputting this in the right folder I'm going to call this turn table render. And I'm going to press the play button, the start queue. And that's it. Now it's being rendered. Okay. And this is our rendered version. So this about concludes this video guys. Uh, if you have any questions, make sure to leave a comment. If you learned anything, make sure to smash that like button, hit the sub button, stay notified of future videos because I think 50 to 60% of you guys aren't subscribed and that's not good. And before we uh, finish this video off, I just wanted to give a thank you to my Patreons. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate your support. Um, again, as, as per the previous video, I will be uploading the source file to the Patreon website. So you guys will have access to that. And uh, with that out of the way, happy animating guys. And I will see you guys in the next video.